This is a demonstration about how to create a component that looks like a double hung window. Start by opening a new document in SketchUp. Go to Top View and you can um, delete your reference person. Draw a rectangle that is 4 feet by 6 feet. I'm drawing the rectangle, pulling it out, and then I'm going to release my mouse, type in 4 apostrophe comma, 6 apostrophe enter. Now I'm ready to start to create the separate parts of my window. I'm going to select the box that I just created, and I'm going to pull that up. to a height of 8 inches. This allows for wall thickness. The next thing I'm going to do is start drawing the individual sections. So I'm going to start down at the bottom. I'm going to select my face and I'm going to draw a rectangle up from the bottom starting in this corner and I will make this rectangle 4 feet by 3 inches. For apostrophe, comma, three, quote, enter. It's a small rectangle. The next one I want to draw another rectangle that will be even smaller. Right above that one. This one will be four feet by one and a half inches. And these are going to become the sill. The next thing that I want to create is the casing. I'm going to select this rectangle. I'm going to select my offset tool. And I'm going to pull upward from the bottom here in two and a half inches. And hit enter. The next thing I want to do is to create the section for the window jam. Again, I'll use my offset. I need to select first. Use my offset tool, pull in. Now for the jam, I'm only going to pull it in 1.5 inches. The next thing I want to create the upper and lower sashes, so I'll need to find the midpoint. I can take my tape measure, go up to this top corner, start to go down, watch that little red dot. When it turns blue, I know that I have reached my midpoint. Now that created a guide, but I don't find that very helpful. So what I like to do is use the pencil. Draw the pencil down. It does the same thing as the ruler. It will find my midpoint. But now I can go straight across to the other midpoint. Now I'm going to create the inner sections of the window. So I'm going to again select the top section and use my offset tool again. And this time I want to only bring it in a half inch. So I'll type 0 0.5, very small amount. Here again, use my offset, pull it in, 0 0.5. Now, I want to select all of these rectangles that I've created, and I'm going to copy and paste them to the other side of my window. So I want to select all of the lines that I've created. And just copy. Warp it around so that I'm on the other side of my window and paste. I'm going to pause the video here so that um, I can place it and not waste your time. Okay, you can see that I've copied the lines but not the shapes. That's how it should look when you have made your copies. I'm going to orbit back to the other 
outside where I was before. I could just hit top view again. Now I'm ready to start separating these shapes into different heights. Up until now, everything is 8 inches deep. The glass is the deepest part of the window, so I'm going to push the two glass rectangles in first. And I'm going to push them in a depth of 3 and 3 quarters inches, 3.75 inches. Same thing for this one, 3.75 inches. The next thing that I want to push in are the styles and rails of the sashes. So that's this section that's right next to the glass. And I want to push those in three inches. Okay. The next part that I want to push in is the jam. And that's this section here. I'll push that in two inches. And finally, the other part will be the casing. I'll push the casing in one inch. Now there's another part of the casing that I need to not forget about, and that's the part underneath the sill here. So I'll push that in one inch. Now for the sill itself, I'm going to pull that out two inches. I would repeat all these measurements on the other side of the window. So again, I'll pause the video while I do that. Okay, at this point you should have something that looks like roughly like this, where you have both sides indented the way that you want them to be. I'm going to take the materials tool, the paint bucket, and I'm going to choose translucent and I'm going to choose one of the glasses there and I'll select the intersection and use my paint bucket to fill that. Select this one, use my paint bucket to fill that. Then I'll orbit around so that I can also fill the other side with glass. My last section here. Now I can see that my object is indeed translucent. If I can at least test it. I'm going to go back to the top view. I'm going to select everything here and I will make it a component and call it double hung. And then I will use my control move to make a copy. And I'll go to the front view. And I'll just put this behind here and see if I can see through it. And I can. So I have successfully made the glass translucent. At this point, you would be able to use this double hung window in any of the buildings that you create. You can add additional textures, if you wish, by selecting any part of your component and filling that with whatever material you want. So let's say that I wanted to fill this with a wood texture. I'm going to choose whichever kind of wood texture I like and fill that in. Because I made it a component, it also filled in the other one. I could choose a paint color if I don't want a wood texture. I could simply color any color paint that I wanted. And choose a section and paint that. Then you have to select the section before you can paint. So you can see how that works. That concludes this tutorial.